All right, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about inflammation. Um, inflammation in the body and on a cellular level is really, in latest research, is believed to be the root of many, many different diseases and kind of mystery diseases even that uh, there doesn't seem to be answers for. So on a cellular level, if we have inflammation, that's where uh, we're gonna talk about today. First, I'd like to just draw the, a cell or, or, or like a diagram here. Okay, so a cell has what's called an outer lipid bilayer. And so the, the actual layer or housing that, that, that contains everything inside of a cell is made up of a lipid dual layer, and lipid meaning fats, okay? So fats, um, as contrary to what sometimes is taught, fats are very, very important and good, um, including cholesterol, because cholesterol makes up a big part of this lipid bilayer, or primarily. Um, so there's things that could disrupt this lipid bilayer and um, compromise the cell. And one of the things is going to be bad fats. So we can have good fats and bad fats. So bad fats. And another thing that could be affecting the cell as far as inflammation is refined or white refined sugar and carbohydrates. So those are refined grains where they've taken out the nutrition out of the grain so that it has a long shelf life. And when that happens, the body doesn't recognize it as real food. So it's actually gonna suck nutrition out of you. And then toxicity could be another factor that affects this cell, okay? So on the actual bilayer of the cell, where it's believed that a lot of the brains of the cell exist, there's these little things called receptors. And receptors allow the cell to receive different nutrients, like vitamins or minerals, um, hormones like insulin, um, and even other hormones like thyroid hormone, so T3 thyroid hormone, these cells need to be able to recognize these hormones so that the cell can respond to them, okay? So these receptors are incredibly important, as you can imagine, uh, otherwise we cannot get nutrition into the cell and the cell cannot live. And uh, these bad fats can actually start to affect these receptors. So if we have bad fats entering into the body, so bad fats are your you know, oils, cheap oils like vegetable oils, soy oils that might be partially rancid by the time they're even used in a product and they're oxidized already. Or if you use fats for frying, the extreme heats can oxidize those fats and cause damage to the cell wall lining, or at least it creates like a coating on this cell wall lining, which creates inflammation on this cell lining. Okay, and as if, if you can imagine, if we have a film or a coating on this cell wall, it can actually start to interfere with these receptors. Now, with that in mind, um, the other thing is, is that these fats, these bad fats, the body doesn't know how to deal with them as well. So they, they can stay in the body for a long time. In fact, it's believed in research that there's about a, up to a 52-day half-life for these fats, and they circulate throughout the body. And you can imagine if they stay in the body longer, they, get, uh, they affect these cell walls longer, okay? So that's one thing that we need to keep in mind. Um, the other thing is the refined sugars and carbohydrates. So when we have these, calorie, or these calories that are actually empty, meaning that they're not really... Um, giving the body what it needs, they compete with these vitamin and mineral nutrient receptors, okay? So it actually can draw nutrition out of the body to figure out how to metabolize those foods. And when that happens, we start to reduce 
the inflow of proper nutrition into the cell. And when that happens, we actually start to reduce the little power plants in the cells, they're called mitochondria, they produce a substance called ATP, and that is your energy source of every living cell. Okay? So every cell in your body produces ATP. And the way that these little power plants get their um, fuel for power is the nutrition. So if we start to, if we start to cut this nutrition down because of the lack of absorption into the cell, we start reducing levels of ATP output. And the dangerous thing about that is that every cell in your body has a mechanism to protect itself. And that cell produces a substance called glutathione, and we'll just, we'll call it GSH for abbreviation, okay? So glutathione is basically what they call an antioxidant. Remember I said that bad fats, they, they're oxidative, they, they're oxidized and they create inflammation. Well, an antioxidant helps to reduce inflammation and reduce um, the possibility of cell death, okay? So it's um, an expensive molecule. Glutathione is an expensive molecule because it takes three ATP molecules to produce one molecule of glutathione. So it takes th three of these to equal one of these, all right? And um, so if we start to reduce the production of ATP, guess what? We start reducing the production of GSH or glutathione, which is your cell's protectant. In fact, it's such a strong antioxidant, they call it an antioxidant because it prevents or reduces oxidation, such a strong antioxidant that it's 5,000 times stronger than vitamin C as an antioxidant. You might have um, heard about you know, antioxidants before. They're you know, listed in a lot of different research and different, even just general you know, um, uh, commercials on nutrition and things like that. So um, the other thing that these cells have is d DNA. Um, and uh, DNA is kind of like the blueprint of every cell so that it can replicate properly. And um, if we start to open the cell up to potential uh, damage because of reduced glutathione, then we start to uh, have more of a risk factor of changing this DNA or altering it, okay? So these receptor, the, these refined sugars also create more inflammation uh, on the cell wall as well. And the more, and more inflamed the cell wall becomes, the more blunted these receptors become so that even the insulin doesn't get recognized as well. So then um, the body can't regulate the blood sugar as well. And that's how people can be, start to get type two diabetes and so forth. Toxins are our third thing that we're gonna talk about. And toxins can enter the body through the environment, environmental tox toxins, exposures, uh, toxins that are in our foods, pesticides, and they actually enter the body and they can float around in the extracellular fluid around the cell and actually cause more damage, oxidative damage to the cell wall, causing more inflammation and blunting these receptors more. And the weaker the cell wall becomes and more inflamed it becomes, the more likelihood that toxins can enter into the cell because the cell's mechanisms are down and start to potentially either damage DNA, which can cause cell death or will cause cell, cell death, or it could mutate DNA, which could lead to potential cancer scenarios where the cell is actually replicating in a, in a improper manner out of control. So that's where um, you know, the big concern is, is making sure that we are careful with the potential toxins that can enter our body. So you can see that if we're blunting these receptors, um, the body might not even, or the cells might not even recognize T3. So a person could be taking a thyroid hormone um, or maybe even trying to be careful on what they're eating but just not recognizing the hormones. So you can almost liken it to um, going and trying to fill up your car uh, or going to, to uh, 
put fuel in, in your car, but instead of putting it in the gas tank, you actually are pouring it on top of the car. You're never getting it to where the, you know, the engine needs it and it's not gonna run properly. And that's exactly what's happening uh, with our bodies on a cellular level and why um, this is a root, one of the major root causes to a lot of diseases.